Good evening. Turn your hymnals to 180. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond Where the saved ever shall soon the glory share Where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore Everybody will be happy over there Everybody will be happy, will be happy Everybody will be happy over there Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers Will be singing round the throne In that land where no one ever knows a care And the Christians of all ages Will join in the triumph song Everybody will be happy over there Everybody will be happy Will be happy over there We will shout and sing His praise Everybody will be happy over there We will hear nobody praying And no mourning in that land For no burdens there will be for us to bear All the people will be singing Glory, glory to the Lamb Everybody will be happy over there Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there We will shout and sing His praise Everybody will be happy over there There we'll meet the one who saved us And who kept us by His grace And who brought us to that land so bright and fair we will praise His name forever as we look upon His face. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. We will shout and sing His praise. Everybody will be happy over there. Well, everybody will We'll be happy over there We will shout and sing His praise Everybody will be happy over there There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond Where the saved ever shall soon the glory share Where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore Everybody will be happy over there Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there We will shout and sing His praise Everybody will be happy over there Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers will be singing round the throne In that land where no one ever knows a care And the Christians of all ages will join in the triumph song Everybody will be happy over there Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there we will shout and sing His praise Everybody will be happy over there I don't know about you guys, but I know we got revival coming up, but I feel like we're already in revival. He's been faithful to show up every time, and I'm thankful for it. Um, before we go to prayer tonight, uh, let's remember everyone. Can you remember everyone on our prayer request, but does anyone else have any prayer request they'd like to announce or give.
Amen. Who's ready to worship tonight? I know I've been we I've been going to revivals at Yankee Hill and a couple other churches, and I'm like Caleb. I'm ready to have a revival here and ready to fill the spirit. So I think we're going to start off with our visitor tonight from Valley by the name of Ellie Thompson. So let's get behind her as she comes up and sings. Shiver in the cold But I did say you never Walk through this world alone And I did say Don't make this world your home I never said that fear you in the night or the loneliness was something you never have to fight but I did say I'd be right there by your side and I did say I'll always help you fight Turn their backs on you Or that the world around you Wouldn't see you as a fool But I did say like me You'll surely be despised And I did say My ways confound the wise Bitter kiss of death Or have to walk through chilly Jordan To enter into rest But I did say I'd be waiting Right on the other side yeah. I did say I'll dry every tear Prepare to play, and someday sooner. 
starts to break Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Of the goodness of God In all my life you have been faithful In all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am in Of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire And in darkest night You 
beauty for ashes Turn my life around He broke my chains and now I dance on solid ground For all he's done to save me I will raise my voice I've got Jesus So I've got joy Joy like a river Running through my soul Joy all around me Everywhere I go Even in the desert Still it overflows I've got Jesus So I've got joy I've got Jesus So I've got joy From his feet to his head Told him all his children And his cat or dead Well then Job's wife said Why don't you curse your God and die But Job said no woman Speaking like a foolish child oh, He ain't never Done me nothing Done me nothing but good Nothing but good Oh he ain't never Done me nothing Done me nothing but good Nothing but good I gave my heart to Jesus Took him as my savior Cast my life with the chosen ones And started out for heaven Soon I was forsaken, my friends left one by one But the good Lord walked beside me, he never left me alone He fed me when I was hungry, cheered me when I was sad He has been the dearest friend this child has ever had and He ain't never done me nothing, done me nothing but good Nothing but good, oh he ain't never done me nothing Nothing but good History tells of Polycarp, the martyr for the gospel's sake They built a fire around his feet and tied him to a stake but the did not consume him, so they pierced him with a sword. The blood ran down, put out the fire, but still he praised the Lord. Now all these years have served him, he's done me nothing but good. Well, I won't repent and I won't recant, tell me why I should. He ain't never done me nothing, done me nothing but good, nothing but good. Oh, he ain't never done me nothing. time I try to stand and start to fall And all those lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus 
When the life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now There was Jesus Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it, there was Jesus. For this man who needs amazing kind of grace and forgiveness at a price I Pay. I'm not perfect, so I thank God every day. There was Jesus. If there was Jesus. In the way, in the searching, in the healing, in the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. On the mountains, in the valleys, and there was Jesus in the shadows of the alleys, and there was Jesus in the fire in the flood, and there was Jesus always is and always was. Oh, oh, oh. This man who needs amazing kind of grace For forgiveness at a price I couldn't pay I'm not perfect so I thank God every day There was Jesus And there was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing, in the hurting like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Every minute, every moment Where I've been and where I'm going Even when I didn't know it or could see it There was Jesus There was Jesus There was Jesus Amen. Haven't we enjoyed this wonderful singing? I, I can feel him. He's here.
For this man who needs amazing kind of grace Forgiveness had a price I couldn't pay I'm not perfect so I thank God every day There was Jesus There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching In the healing, in the hurting Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Every minute, every moment Where I've been and where I'm going Even when I didn't know it Or couldn't see it There was Jesus on the mountain in the valleys and there was jesus in the shadows of the alleys and there was jesus in the fire in the flood and there was jesus always is and always was oh, oh, oh. no i'll never walk alone In the healing and the hurting Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Every minute, every moment Where I've been and where I'm going Even when I didn't know it or couldn't see it There was Jesus There was Jesus pastor called me this week and he asked me if I'd come preach for him and uh, I uh, was talking to him there a little bit and it wasn't the day he wanted me to come I couldn't I couldn't come and he said uh, he said well we got a time limit on Sunday nights he said we like to get in and out in an hour and uh, I don't know how the Holy Spirit's supposed to work in a place like that no, I don't. I don't. I, uh, I mean, when I go to the house of God, I want him to be here in the midst of us. And uh, whether it's an hour or two hours or two and a half hours, it don't make no difference. And uh, I, uh, I, feel an, I feel an urgency. I don't know if you all feel that, but I feel an urgency on how important that it is to get the lost to the house of God. I feel an urgency for that. I don't know why. I've not, I don't have an open personality when it comes to inviting people to church or talking to people about God. I like to mind my own business. I let people mind their, you know, just work both ways. And I don't like to push anybody's buttons. I don't like to do anything like that. But uh, I, I have been inviting people like never before to get to the house of God. Because I feel an urgency. I feel it's important. And uh, there's a boy I'm working on right now. And uh, me and him has been running beagles together. I don't have beagles, but he asked me, you know, asked me if I would go with him, and I have. And he is, he is a nice, nice boy. I mean a nice boy. Has a good family, a good wife, has beautiful children. And uh, he said, you know, me and my wife's been talking about it. And he said, we're going we're to surprise you one of these days, and we're going to show up. And I, I just flat tell him, I said, man, it's, this world is winding down quick. And it is. I mean, it is. It's winding down quick and in a hurry. And I feel an urgency. We need to get our lost loved ones in this place. Get them saved because it's, it's winding down, folks. It is. It's winding down. And I feel that. And other churches are saying the same thing. They feel an urgency. And I feel that in our services in a time like this to get our, our lost loved ones in, in the house of God. And uh, I... Uh, I don't know about you, but I absolutely just love what's going on around here. I mean, I love every second of it, every minute of it. It's always a, it's always a good thing to go to the house of God and not want to go home. 
Because it ain't always been like that, especially at some places. There's times I got to places and I couldn't wait for it to be over. But I like when I go to church and I don't want to go home. I like services like that. And I was talking to my father-in-law last Sunday night after service, and I was letting him know that his daughter's been coming out to our church and she didn't have gas. And uh, she, she thought that Tommy was open on Sunday and he's not, and she, didn't, she wasn't able to get gas. And I was calling to let him know that mom and dad was going to follow her home and things. Well, we got talking about service. We got talking about service that we had, and he said that he had great services too where he was. And, and I said, buddy, I said, you know how good our service was? I said, there was a tooth on the floor. <laughs> by, the time, by the time our service come to an end, he said, dang. He said, hey, you, guys had, you guys had a service. I said, yes, we did. You know you had a good service when there's teeth on the floor. Amen. Yeah. Good service. Good service. Amen. Most of all, I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. And for the Holy Spirit. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that He's available. That He's available. And uh, there's a lot of things in this world that's available to us, but one of those things is still the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. And I am thankful for that tonight. I sure am. Sure am. Exodus. Yeah. Ninety five years. Yeah, yeah. I said, uh, I get to live in my own house, get to sleep in my own bed. Yep. And uh, he's really good to me. Yep. 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 And I have been a Christian now for 74 years. 74 years. And there's no place like this place. No, nope, there's not. Well, this is where God saved me. Yep. 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 Amen. I don't know when it'll be, but I'm going to stay ready. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. 74 years. 74 years. God ain't let her down one time in 74 years. been saved so long she lost count yeah been saved so long she lost count and I was I was thinking today as I was going over my message and reading through the pages of the word of God there's not one page in our Bible where God let anybody down you know that there's not one page in here there's not one story there's not one word there's not one not one verse not one chapter where I read God let somebody down and I ain't met nobody in this world that I've talked to. And they said, well, God let me down, so I give up. God ain't ever let nobody down. He ain't ever not showed up. He ain't ever not been right on time. He's always been right where he's always been. And I'm thankful for a consistent Savior like that, aren't you? Yes. Amen. Exodus chapter number 17 is where I'm going to be tonight. Exodus chapter number 17 is kind of a familiar story. But I just want to share with you my heart tonight. That's all I know to do. Exodus chapter number 17. And uh, read a few verses. Exodus 17. Amen. Exodus 17, verse number 9. Exodus 17, verse number 9. It says, And Moses said unto Joshua, and I promise you today, I meant to say this before I started, I didn't talk to Dad this week and say, Dad, what are you preaching on Sunday morning? I didn't talk to him about it. We didn't exchange phone calls. I didn't talk to him throughout the week about it. I didn't know what he was preaching. He didn't know what I was preaching. But I'm not going to apologize for it. I sat over there all morning and kind of was squirming because he was kind of preaching kind of what I was, had on my heart. And uh, I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm not. It's not a, it's not a coincidence. It's not a, you know, it's, it's not an accident. It's, it's, it's God being God. It's all, it's all you can say is God being God. It's happened over and over and over again. And then, if it happened one or two times, then maybe it would be a coincidence. But it seems like every single Sunday, everything's always just right in order where it's supposed to be. And uh, it's just the Holy Spirit being the Holy Spirit and God being God. And it's just, it's just the bottom line tonight. Verse 9, Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Elimelech. Tomorrow, tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Elimelech 
And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up on top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the one on the other side. And his hands were steady into the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial and a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put up the remembrance of Elimelech from under, under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi's. And he said, Because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Elimelech from generation to generation. I mean, this is a, I would say it's a familiar passage of scripture tonight. Uh, they've wrote songs about this uh, in particular story. They've wrote poems about it. They've made pictures about it. And uh, what a beautiful, beautiful story that it is. Uh, but one thing that I did not notice or did not know in this story and studying it down th throughout this past week is how evil the Amalekites really were. That's, that's one thing I, I did not know. Uh, shame on me, but I kind of thought this is the first time we see Joshua's name mentioned in the Word of God. It's the first time that he's introduced to us in the Word of God. And, and looking at this, this was Joshua's first battle that he ever faced. And Joshua was victorious over and over and over and over again. Joshua didn't know what it was like to lose a battle. I mean, he was victorious. When he was the underdog, he still won. And... In this story and, and looking at this, I kind of thought, well, maybe the Amalekites was just a little bitty tribe who, you know, would have been easy to wipe out. It was Joshua's first battle. Maybe they, that God just started Joshua off small. Shame on me for thinking something like that. Uh, and studying the Amalekites, uh, this, this was descendants of Amalek and a grandson of Esau. And, you know, throughout the Old Testament, it was kind of generational when a man was faithful and served God and lived by God's law and done what God wanted him to do, it seemed like that followed down from generation to generation in that family tree. And it seemed like when a man would rise up and be evil and, and be mean and, and be hateful and, and, and love to kill and all those things, it seemed like that that passed down from generation to generation. And here we are with a bunch of uh, kinfolk to Esau. We all know what Esau did. And that's not the message tonight, but that just goes to show you it pays to serve God and raise your children up in the house of God and teach them God's law, teach them the grace of God, the power of God, the mercy of God. Man, we take those things, I mean, we act like sometimes those things ain't no big deal, but I promise you it's a big deal. It's a big deal. My, my little girl who's just four years old, man, she pays attention what goes on in that little class back there. You wouldn't think it because if you tell her to do something, two seconds later, she forgets. I mean, it's just the way she is. But she pays attention back there in class. A few weeks ago, they talked about praying and how to pray. And buddy, that whole week, she wanted to pray for everything. She wanted to pray for the TV show she watched. She wanted to pray for our dog. She wanted to pray for everything. And they pay attention and it pays to show them how to serve God and, and the generational thing. And that's how it worked in the Old Testament, it seemed like. This was a fierce tribe, these Amalekites. They was a fierce tribe. I've done a little study on them this week, looking into them. Uh, even the place they lived was a hateful and deserted place. Uh, they lived in a desert. Uh, they lived by a sea called the Dead Sea. I mean, that sounds like a bad place to go, doesn't it? I don't hear nobody saying, for vacation this year, I'm going to take my family to a desert out by the Dead Sea. I mean, I, you don't hear nobody saying that. Even where they were from and even where they were located really was not good. And these, this tribe literally made their living by being thieves. Everything they have really did not belong to them. The food they ate didn't belong to them. The swords they carried didn't belong to them. The shields they used, the armor they had, nothing that they really had belonged to them because they was thieves. And this was something I read about them this week that just kind of blew my mind, but it said they loved to kill. They killed for pleasure. And, and here these men were getting ready to face Joshua for the very first time on the battlefield. And I, I don't know about you, but in reading about these Amalekites, it sounds a lot like the devil. I mean, what's the Bible say about the devil? The Bible says that he comes to steal, 
He comes to kill and he comes to destroy. And if I could really paraphrase the devil tonight in just a short sentence, I would say this, the devil has made his living off of stealing off the child of God. He, that's how he's made his living. He loves to destroy homes. He loves to try to steal our children. He loves to try to steal our grandchildren. He likes to warp their minds. I mean, let's just think about it tonight. I mean, the things we hear, the things we come across today are absolutely crazy, but it's because the devil and the demonic forces of this world are playing with our children's minds and playing with our grandbabies' minds and everything's going crazy. Everything's going berserk and we understand that tonight. These, these, this tribe sounds a lot like the devil sounds a lot like the devil kills for pleasure I mean who's that sound like tonight and here's Joshua standing for the very first time with a sword in his hand with on one side and a shield in his hand on the other side and Moses comes to him for the very first time he says he says Joshua you're, you're going into battle and the first thing you have to do is choose you out some good men to go to battle with Choose you out some good men to go to battle with. Can I say tonight, I'm thankful that I have some good men here tonight to go to battle with. I got some good women here tonight to go to battle with. I, I'm thankful for that. He told Joshua, he said, Joshua, don't you go down the road and pick out no deadbeats. Uh, but I want you to go and I want you to find a faithful man. I want you to go find a man that's consistent. I want you to go find a man that, that has worked and that's been on time and has done the right thing. And can I say tonight, I'm thankful for good men of God that has stood down through the years and, and down through time that I will go to war with tonight. And you know, as this goes on, this wasn't even really a physical battle. This was more of a spiritual battle. This was more of a spiritual battle. Well, why, can't, why do you say that? Yeah, he had a sword. Yeah, he had armor. And yeah, he was going to fight. But the Bible says as they begin to fight, Moses' hands was in the air. The Bible says he went on top of the mountain and he lifted his hands in the air. And when his hands was in the air, the Bible says that Joshua prevailed. But when his hands got heavy and they come to the ground, Amalek prevailed. So that tells me that it was more than a physical battle going on here, but there was a spiritual battle going on here as well. And can I say tonight, we are in a spiritual battle right now in 2023. What's the Bible say? The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against a spiritual wickedness in high places. And can I say tonight, around every corner, around every school system is a no good for nothing dirty devil trying to steal your baby trying to come into our homes and we need good men of God to rise up and say as for me and my house we're going to serve God regardless of what anybody's got to say or regardless of what anybody else has got to do I'm going to serve God hallelujah I'm going to serve God hey, amen we need good men and we need good women to rise up and take spiritual the spiritual reality of their home you know what God here's what the Bible says about about a father the Bible says that a father is supposed to be the high priest of a home. That's what the Bible says. And you know what? We're living in a day where the women are twice as spiritual as the men are. That's just the way it is. I, I, our church, other churches, it seems like the women have just stepped up. The men just kind of took a back seat to them and said, I'll let them be the spiritual leader. But the Bible says that the man of the house is to be the high priest of a home. That means we're to pay attention what our children are watching. That means we're to pay attention who our children are talking to. That means we need to pay attention what they get on YouTube and watch. That means we need to pay attention on who their friends are, who they're trying to hang out with and be buddies with. And now we got dads, they're too busy playing Xbox or playing PlayStation and worried about what's on television. Their marriage is going down the tube. Their money, their marriage isn't no good. Their money ain't no good. Nothing's no good. And they ain't got enough sense to pick up the word of God. They ain't got enough sense to get to the house of God and say, I'm going to be the man I'm supposed to be. I'm going to be the woman I'm supposed to be for the good things of God. Amen. Moses' hands was in the air. Moses' hands was in the air. And when his hands was in the air, Joshua was winning. But when his hands got tired and went to the ground, Amalek would prevail. Amalek would prevail. I'm here to tell you tonight that we have victory, but our victory's up. That's where our victory comes from. I've already told you, I've read this Bible more in the last month than I've read it my whole life. I've read page after page after page. And you know what I read page after page after page? I read where God was faithful. I read where God showed mercy. I read where God gave grace. I read where God would show up when it looked like the apostles 
impossible was going on in somebody's life, I would read where God would show up and make something happen. That's what I've read over and over and over again. Then I get to walk into the house of God and I get to hear testimonies of how something looked impossible. It looked like I was, I was on my deathbed. But then God showed up and God done not come on the scene and done something miraculous in my life. What we need to do as a child of God is get our hands up in the air and realize our victory comes up tonight. Our victory comes up. The Bible says, I lift my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made the heaven and the earth. Amen. We look for so much help in all the wrong places when in reality help is found right here in the house of God. Man, I feel God all over me tonight. I'm thankful tonight for the good things of God that he's given us. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. People take so much effort and they take so much hope in what Oprah's got to say. Oprah ain't nothing but a big old dummy. Uh, Dr. Phil ain't nothing but a big old dummy. If you want help tonight, God's here to give help to you. All you got to do is look up because that's where our victory is. That's where our victory is. Amen. Amen. That's where our victory is found. Up, up, up is where victory is found. Thank God. Thank God. Too many times when we get in those valleys and we get in those storms, we want to crawl up in a corner and just die. When we got a good God living up in heaven that sits up high and he looks down low to where we are and he comes to us every single time I've called on his name. Every single time I've called on his name, he's been there, he's been faithful, he's been real and he's been true. He's been true. Amen. We want to sit in the corner and feel sorry for ourselves. We want to sit in the corner and think nobody cares and we want to call doctors and we want to try to take medications and we oh, there ain't nothing wrong with those things. But that stuff can only go so far. It can only go so far. If we would just know and realize tonight that our helper lives up in heaven and all we have to do is call out to him. All we have to do is call out to him. Moses' hands was in the air. And here's Joshua. The Bible doesn't say this, but something tells me that Joshua had butterflies in his stomach. I mean, he's getting ready to fight a big battle for the very first time. But I believe as he watched Moses walk up that hill, walk up that hill, a man that he had confidence in. I would say that when Joshua looked up and he seen Moses' hands go up in the air, I believe right then and right there, Joshua knew there was something bigger going on than just Joshua. There was something bigger going on than just Moses. But the victory come not through the sword of Joshua or through the lifting the hands of Moses, but victory came because there was an unseen hand that was working on behalf of Joshua tonight. The unseen hand of God that works in our favor and works on our behalf tonight, that's only found from him. Only found from him, can't be found anywhere else. I know you can buy a lot of things on Amazon, but you can't buy this on Amazon. You can't buy it on Amazon. Don't matter if you got Amazon Prime or whatever the case is, you can't get it on there. Can't get it on there. Here's Joshua getting ready to fight, getting ready to threaten. The Bible doesn't say this. The Bible doesn't say this. But when I'm watching something, and I want, I want, say I'm watching my favorite team, and I want them to win, and I really want them to win bad, and we got a lot of good sports people here that love sports, and that's good. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But when I'm watching a ball game, and I want my team to win, and they do something good, I just don't sit there and go like this. You know what I mean? And the Bible doesn't say this, but something tells me when Moses' hands went in the air and Joshua began to work that sword, something tells me Moses was hollering down, that a boy, Joshua. That a boy, Joshua. Keep right on fighting, brother. Keep right on going. Don't stop. Don't quit. Keep on fighting. Throw that sword one more time. Throw that armor one more time. Wipe that sweat from your brow because victory's on the way. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't give up. And can I tell you tonight, we may not be living in Exodus chapter number 17, and I may not be Moses, but Beach Fork, I'm here to tell you, don't stop. Don't quit. Don't give up. Walk another step. Walk another mile. Throw that sword one more time. Don't quit. Don't stop. Amen. Amen. We give all our efforts on everything. On everything. Why not give all of our efforts to God? You know what Tyson told me a couple weeks ago? He said, Caleb, I'm to the place in my life 
where I'm going to go to church and I'm going to lift the name of Jesus high and I don't care what anybody else wants to do about it. He said, if they want to sit there and look at me, they can sit there and look at me. If they want to get up and join me, they can get up and join me. He said, I'm going to go to church and I'm not going to care. And you want to know something? He ain't lying, is he? He ain't lying. Uh, he wasn't fibbing. He wasn't April Fool me. He was telling the truth. He was telling the truth. And if we could all just get to that place, if we could all just get to that mindset where I'm going to go to church tonight and I'm going to lift my hands high. That's where our victory is tonight. I'm going to lift my hands high. Your week would probably go a hundred times better than what it originally would. If we would just come in this place and lift the name of Jesus high, things would probably begin to work out for you in your life. If we would just come and lift our hands and lift the name of Jesus high, victory would be right around the corner for you. But yet we live in defeat, defeat, defeat. And you know something? I'm convinced. I'm convinced tonight that there's just some people that want help. They want help. They're satisfied crawling up in that corner and just playing a pity party, feeling sorry for themselves. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm convinced that some people just, they don't want it. They don't want help. I mean, it don't matter how hard I preach. It don't matter how easy I preach. It don't matter how good Tommy preaches, how good Doug preaches. It don't matter how hard we study, how hard we pray. There's just some people says, nah, that was good. But I'm just gonna live another week like I did last week. And I don't understand. I really, I mean, I don't understand. Don't understand. I went, I went to a church a couple months ago and I preached and I made a sweet spirit come in that place. Nobody went to the altar and that's okay. I mean, that's fine. You're, you're your own person. I, you know, I can't go back and drag you up and pull you up. And I mean, I, I can do jumping jacks and push-ups and, and preach until my lungs are on the floor, but I, I can't, can't come back there and pull anybody up to the altar. That's okay. But at the end of, my, at the end of the altar call, I said, if there's anybody here tonight that's facing something and they could, they could really just use some prayer, I said, would you lift your hand up? And I'm not kidding you. From one side of the church to the other side of the church. Just, I mean, just raising that hand as high as they could. And I mean, wouldn't drop it until I said, I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. Why? I mean, I got my truck and I thought, what's the point? Honestly, what's the point? And spending time in prayer, spending time to study and do, and do my part. You got to give, you can't just go up here and just, just blabber it out. You got to do your part. You got to give the Holy Spirit something to work with. And what's the point of praying and, and doing all these things for people to say, man, that was good. I, I should have come tonight. Really should have come. Well, bless your heart. I can't. Right here. Victory's up. Victory's up. And I can tell people victory's up. I can tell them the altar's a good place to come and find rest like last week. Whole bunch of hands piled up on us like we talked about last week. All the things. And I, I got four or five messages on Facebook this week. I'm just going to be real with you. Okay, that was for me. I should have been on the altar. Okay. I'm like, well, what do you want me to do about it? Preach harder next time. Preach five minutes longer. What do you want me to do? I'll do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes. But I'm just convinced some people are satisfied not having victory. Not having victory. They're just satisfied where they are. Ain't nothing you can do about it, nothing you can do to fix it. Just the way it's going to be. But here's, here's Joshua. Joshua's fighting, throwing the sword. Moses' hands are in the air. Like I say, the Bible doesn't say this, but something tells me he's just cheering Joshua on with every ounce of energy that he has. I feel that way. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. I don't know. Here he is fighting. Bible says that God brought victory. Joshua and his men, they defeated the Amalekites. And after this, I believe that Joshua, I believe that Joshua was one of the greatest military men to ever pick up a sword. I mean, he just, I mean, he won. I mean, when he was the underdog, he won. When he was the big dog, he won. I mean, it just seemed like when it looked impossible, he won. And I've heard people say, well, Joshua must have stood about 6'8", 280 pounds, solid muscle. And maybe he did, I don't know. Maybe he stood 5'2", and was lumpy. I don't know. We don't know how big Joshua was. But we do know that Joshua won every battle that he ever fought. But I believe there's one verse. I believe there's one verse in Exodus chapter number 17 that helps me understand why Joshua was victorious in every battle that he ever fought. 
One verse, and it's found in verse 14. Joshua wins, the battle's over. The Amalekites are defeated, Joshua standing in victory, and this is what takes place after this. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book. Listen, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. You know what that word rehearse means? That means do it over and over and over again. So every single morning at breakfast time, every single afternoon at lunchtime, every night at dinner and every night before bed, I could see Moses sitting down and saying, hey Joshua, you remember back there in Exodus chapter number 17? You remember? You remember when you were standing on that battlefield for the first time against the Amalekites? They were bigger than you. They were stronger than you. They had more manpower than you. They were evil. They were were no good for nothing evil men. But you stood victorious at the end. But do you remember me standing on top of that mountain, raising my hands up in the air in victory? You didn't win that battle because of who you was. You didn't win that battle because of how strong you was. But you won that battle because of how strong he was and how great he was. It wasn't nothing you did, Joshua but it was born because of what he did. And can I say tonight, we are sitting in a congregation full of people that have went through battle after battle after battle and after every battle, you're still here sitting in a pew. You're still raising your hands, lifting the name of Jesus high. Why did you make it out the other side? Is it because you're so great? Is it because you're so wonderful? But by golly, it's because he's so great and it's because he's so wonderful. He's the one that done all the work. He's the one that done all the effort. He's the one that I can give praise to. And it wasn't nothing we did. It wasn't nothing you did. But by God, it was everything that he did. Amen. It's everything he did. Amen. The more I live my life, the more I realize I can't take another step. I can't breathe another breath. I can't live another day without the Lord. Amen. Can't do a thing without him. I can't preach another sermon. I can't teach another lesson. I can't testify another time without the spirit of God doing his work and doing his part in my life. I believe when Joshua stood, they say the biggest battle Joshua ever faced was the walls of Jericho. That's what they say, and it probably was. Biggest battle of Joshua's life. And the night before the battle, the Bible says that Joshua was standing on top of the mountain looking out over Jericho. And no doubt, as uh, being the military man that he was, he was probably thinking to himself, well, I'm gonna need men over here. I'm going to need bow and arrows over here. I'm going to need ropes and fire over here. And I'm going to need to do this and I'm going to need to do that. But I'll say before any of that crossed my mind or before any of that crossed Joshua's mind, he probably was thinking back all the way to Exodus chapter number 17 (laughs) when, when Moses rehearsed in his ears over and over and over again that you won because not who you are, but because of who he is. The unseen hand of God doing his part and working in our life. And can I say that I'm thankful that he's working. I'm I'm thankful that he's working in my life and he's working in your life and he's working in this church. And the greatest gift from God in my life is, is, oh yeah, I love my wife, I love my girls, I love my family. But one of the greatest things that that God ever did was save me. And I don't ever wanna get over that. I don't ever, I think that's what happens to a lot of Christians. They just get saved for so long, they're just over it. They get over it after so long. But I don't ever want to get over it. On my worst days, you know what I do? On my worst days, I I can sit and think, well, at least I ain't got to go to hell. I ain't got to go to hell. If I die today, I'm leaving. I'm out of here. I'm gone. And that's something we can rejoice about every single day. Every single day. Tonight, there are, there's, my goodness sakes, from this side of the church to this side of the church, we could be here all night long talking about how it looked impossible. It looked impossible. Your situation looked impossible. Your situation looked hopeless. But somehow, some way, God showed up. God showed up. And he made a way when it seemed like there would never be no way. Looked impossible. Looked impossible. Testimony after testimony. I've come to this church for 31 years. And for 31 years, testimony after testimony after testimony, I can recall my mind where it looked like it was hopeless. If we was all getting what we deserve tonight, we all probably should be dead already. But look how full this place is. Full of miracles. I look at Gary sitting back here tonight. I mean, that situation could have easily went the other way, Gary. And here you are sitting, raising your hands, giving God praise, giving God thanks for what he's done. For what he's done. You know, he's not here tonight. But man, I love Jamie Veach. I love that man. 
He's been coming to this church for a few years, but I feel like he's come here for 31 years. The whole time I've been here. And you know what I love about him? I love, I love the fact that when the Spirit of God gets on him, he don't know what in the world to do with himself. You ever notice that? I mean, this morning he was sitting there and he was turning this way and now he just don't know. He's so happy. He just don't know what to do with himself. But you know what Jamie's realized in his life? That victory comes up. Victory comes up. I know we come to the altar and we kneel down, but we're just kneeling down to recognize that God's greater than we are. That's the only reason we kneel down. Really, when we, need that, when we kneel down, we just need to look up because that's where our victory's found. Luke was up here praying last week. You know when I think he got victory? When his brother made him raise his hands. Why? Because that's where our victory is. Our victory's up. Our victory's up. People turn looking and longing and searching for just a little bit of satisfaction in their life, don't they? They spend a lot of money. They go a lot of places trying to find that emptiness, that void they have in their life, looking for a little bit of victory. Man, right here it is. I like to win. I do. I like to win. I like when my sports teams wins. I just like to win. I ain't ever read nowhere in this book where we lose, where we come out defeated. I've read it more in the last month than I've ever read it in my life. And we win every single time. If we don't, if we don't make it to tomorrow, we win. We win. There's no defeat. There's no defeat. Joshua didn't know what it was like to be defeated because he remembered his victory was up. His victory was up. Now, I've already, I've already made the statement tonight that there's just some people, you look at them, and you can tell, that you can tell they're miserable. You can tell they ain't got no joy. They ain't got no satisfaction. They're just... You ask people in the store when you see them and people you know and Maybe somebody you're running, you know, you went to school with, whatever. You hear, you hear people say this all the time. How you doing? I'm making it. I'm making it. I just don't want to make it. I just don't want to exist. I just don't want to exist and pay bills and die and that's it. I want God to do something miraculous. And I feel like we're that close. I feel like we're that close for God doing something just miraculous. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. And I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying. God, show us things that we don't even know about. Something miraculous. Do something great big. Not because of who I am or who Tom is or the deacons are or the board. They ain't got nothing to do with any of it. But to lift his name up. See people saved. See people saved. That's what this is all about. Our victory's up. I know this was a simple message. It really was. And sometimes I worry when God gives me a simple message. I'm afraid people's going to think, well, he didn't stay. I don't know why. I say, go, I stand up here and holler, don't worry about what people think. I preach it like this. Because we all do. We worry about what people think. The only two people I know in my life that didn't care what people think was James Drain Tyson. That's the only two people I know that didn't care what people think. But man, if we could just all get in that mindset, we're just a bunch of big families in here that's just... Brothers and sisters in Christ, one day we're going to heaven together. And something tells me when we get there, we ain't going to care who sees us do what. We ain't going to care. Our victory's up tonight. Stand with me if you will. Stand with me if you will. That's what God gave me. That's what God gave me. Amen. You ain't got to live in defeat. Jeff, you don't care wherever you are. Come play something. I've seen you on your way. Come up and play something if you don't care for a few moments. Amen. You're here tonight and you've been living a defeated life. There, my goodness, there's no reason to. There's no reason to. The services we've been having... I mean, if you walk out of here defeated tonight, ain't nobody's fault but yourself. It's just the way you can say it. It's just the only way you can say it tonight. God's here. God's in this place. He was in this place this morning. He's in this place tonight. He's here. He's here. If you need help, if you need victory, won't you come get that tonight? Won't you come get that? Amen. Anybody at all, just step out right now where you are. Young people, middle-aged people, don't make no difference. Anybody? Anybody need to pray? place to find victory is on the altar. It's a good place to find victory.
almost persuaded. I feel like that the Holy Spirit's been here tonight in His service, and I think He spoke to people's hearts. If He can't persuade you, I'm not sure I can do much to do that either tonight. But I'm going to tell you, when you turn me away, it's not too serious of a deal. When we turn Him away, that's another story. Would you reconsider and just step out tonight? Would you step out tonight? Anyone at all, come and pray. song says a, another a more convenient day there's never going to be a more there's never going to be a convenient time the enemy will put all kind of obstacles in your way in your mind to say you know I can't live that life I can't do that I can't I can't be like this one or that one or these people you know he didn't call any of you to be me he didn't he didn't call up not one person in this church that he called to be me. He called you to be you. You're going to have to seek him for yourself and seek out your own salvation. And he'll show you the way. Anyone want to come as we wait? If I look out, this is a, a beautiful Sunday night crowd wonderful crowd here tonight and uh, have you appreciated uh, we were glad to have Ellie come and sing for us tonight done a great job and all of our own beach forkers tonight too I'd take a whole room full like that myself <laughs> I would I'd like to have a whole church full like that that's got a desire to do something for God we thank, we're thankful for that Thankful for all of our young people that are here tonight. We have heard two great messages today. I don't know where you would have went anywhere in the world to have heard any better preaching than what we've heard here today. Would you agree with me on that? Thank God. These boys have preached us the truth. Now all we got to do is follow it, right? Step up and follow what they've preached to us. And uh, been kind of hard on us men today. Men, we're going to have to step up. <laughs> we're going to have to step up. And uh, I think that God expects that of us, don't you? I think your women expect that of you, really. They like to have a man that would be the, uh, even, some of them wouldn't admit that, but they'd like to have a man that would step up and be the spiritual leader of their house tonight. So, uh we appreciate the word today. God bless you all. Come back Wednesday night. I think Caleb's preaching again Wednesday. We're going to work him over good. He's young and keep him. Uh, I do want to say we thank God. I was uh, at Danny's church Friday and Saturday night. We had people at the altar Friday night. Two got to the Lord last night in the service there. I was two saved. And so God's doing great things there too. Uh, he's one of ours. He went out and is a pastor now. And you think all the people that's left Beach Fork and went and pastored other churches, and they're doing, they're doing a great job. Uh, and uh, just appreciated the Holy Spirit was there both nights. Good, good spirit there. So we just appreciate the Lord. God bless you all. We'll see you Wednesday night.